Sterile Processing Professionals brand and the Sterile Guy here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the proper way in which a sterile processing department should be designed, but also how that design needs to make sense with a workflow from dirty to clean. If you don't mind, take a second, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss any future videos. When people hear of the topic of SPD design, they immediately usually go to the workflow from dirty to clean. And at the core of the concept, that is ultimately correct. But if you read into what Amy says about design, it actually is a lot more complicated and intensive than that. So yes, right up front, not only does a sterile processing department need to be designed so that instruments can actually work from the workflow from dirty to clean, it needs to actually be designed in a way that physically separates areas of that department. And this is so the proper ventilation can take place, whether it's positive or negative air pressure, the number of air exchanges, as well as the temperatures and the humidities. If you want to understand more about positive and negative pressure and how that works with air exchanges, go take a look at this video. If you want to know more about temperature and humidity with air exchanges, go watch this video. In Amy, Chapter 3 and Annex A are both dedicated to SPD design and workflow. Annex A even has an illustration of what they feel a good design for sterile processing is. But here comes the complicated part I spoke about earlier. If you've ever read Chapter 3 of Amy, you would see that a lot of thought goes into the design and the workflow. It incorporates workflow of traffic control, mechanical systems, ventilation systems, electrical systems, walls, floors, ceilings, um, hand washing stations, lighting requirements. There's so many different things that go into the design of a sterile processing department. And that doesn't even cover the actual space you need to work as well as the space you need to store this gigantic amount of supplies and instrumentation. Did you know there are even lighting requirements for different areas of sterile processing? And not only that, lighting requirements that are dependent on the age of your sterile processing workers. It's totally true. Amy ST79 2017 chapter 3.3.5.6 is all about lighting. Okay, so as workflow is concerned, let's talk about how sterile processing departments are generally designed. And no, this will not look the same as every other department. Every hospital, every sterile processing department is built and designed differently, but it should have the same core concepts. The decontamination department will always have access to outside of the department. And the reason for this is because you need to be able to receive instruments, both new, dirty, um, loaner instrumentation, all needs to come directly to the dirty area so that it can actually go through the correct process before it ever reaches the clean area. And the decontamination area is closed off and completely separated from the rest of the department. The only access to the clean side is usually like one or two doors, depending on how big your department is, and then a pass-through window is what they call it. And this pass-through window is mainly for communicating back and forth between the areas of the department, as well as passing through instruments that cannot go through the thermal disinfection or chemical disinfection process to get out of decontam. And speaking of thermal washer disinfectors, these are usually I say usually, but they should all be this way now, built into the wall, actually separating the departments so that an instrument or a, tr a big rack of instruments can actually go into the washer. The door closes, it goes through its entire cycle. And as long as it successfully completes that cycle, the door on the opposite side opens and that trays come out to the clean side. Okay, so let's exit decontamination and head into the rest of the sterile processing department. Now I have seen the prep and pack area, the sterilizer area and sterile storage all be completely separate areas um, walled off just like decontam but I've also seen it where prep and pack sterilization and storage is all in the exact same big open area too. Both of those aren't right or wrong. So the process instruments after decontam make their way to prep and pack. And that is where instruments are inspected for functionality, cleanliness, and all that good stuff assembled, 
um, trade up and sent to sterilization. Sterilization is where they go through the process of either steam sterilization, um, H2O2, vaporized hydrogen peroxide, ethylene oxide, whatever um, sterilization process the instrument needs and you have, that's the area it goes through. Once it goes through that sterilization area, it either takes some time to cool and or goes to the sterile storage. And that's where it sits awaiting its next use. The design and workflow is not only so that you have a dirty to clean concept, but also so that it's designed so that it limits the risk of instruments making it through certain areas without going through the process that is necessary in that area. So if your prep and pack and your sterilization area are too intermixed or close together, you might have trays that are containerized and then someone picks up that tray thinking it's sterile when it's not. There needs to be a clear process with clear separation so that instruments that are awaiting sterilization have one area specific away from the sterilization area or right to the side of it. And then the instruments that have gone through the sterilization need to be in an opposite area. So it's clearly identified by geographical location, what is sterile and what is not. This can be identified with the dots on the locks or the tape if it hasn't changed, but not everyone is that smart. And I don't know how many times I've seen nurses or techs come down to sterile processing and grab an instrument set they need and start walking away. And you're like, um, hey, that isn't even sterile. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the office based design of a sterile processing. And what I mean by this is the sterile processing that maybe is done in a dental clinic or is done in a veterinary clinic, or maybe you just have a small clinic within the hospital that does their own decontamination and sterilization, and they only have one dedicated room to do the entire process. Now, is this ideal? No, it is not ideal, but there is provisions for a way to make this work in instances like that where it doesn't make sense to build an entire department around it. Amy has an illustration of this concept on page 16 of the manual. Now, the best way to do this is to actually use the entire perimeter of the room for your process. So let's say you do have a rectangle and your door comes in through the middle, then you might want to start your process right here. So you have your decontamination area where you're cleaning and washing instruments. And then you have your next area where you go into like drying and then um, assembly of the instrumentation and containerizing or wrapping or whatever you do. And then on the opposite end of the area is where you can do the sterilization and even have your trays cool before you move them to storage. Now, storage is the one thing that should be outside of this room. You do not want to store instruments in this room that are sterile. Okay. I know that was a lot, but I hope that helped you to kind of understand the concept of design and workflow and how that works best with separation and ensuring that each instrument goes through the process correctly. Any topics or videos you want to see, please put in them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Pretty, pretty, please subscribe. And I love you guys. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video.